Hello and welcome to the stock specific class here for Thursday, June the 1st. If you have any questions during the week or any questions I don't get to here in the live class, make sure you send those to jerry at traderspro.com. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Also, if there's any audio issues, any clicking on the audio, uh, please let me know. If I can't hear it on my end, so I rely on you guys to let me know if it's a problem. It hasn't been a problem for a while, so, but. I do want to keep pointing that out uh, so that uh, I don't have people leave the meeting because uh, of the audio issues when I can fix it pretty quick, I think. Well, usually I can. All right. Um, obviously, on, on Tuesday, we were talking about a bearish reversal that was kind of taking place. And, and yesterday, we did get some follow through to that, but it was kind of an indecision day yesterday. Uh, today, the market's uh, rallying a little bit. Um, uh, now. I'm going to point out some things that again would cause me to be a little bit cautious to know, to 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 assume we're going to rally a lot off of where we're at right now. Um, kind of the same things that I keep pointing out uh, and that keep keep showing keep keep uh, showing us that uh, the, the rallies tend to stall out. So uh, again, these are things that um, you want to pay attention to. There isn't one thing that we look at uh, that tells you what's likely to happen, but Remember what our job is. Our job uh, as technical analysts is to analyze the probabilities, and there's a lot of different things that we can we can analyze. And sometimes we analyze everything, and it's a coin flip. You know, we like it could go either way. Um, and there's other times where it's like, hey, there's a very strong chance you're going to get a, a a certain move. And sometimes it can be very short term that you get the move, or uh, that you start a longer term. Uh, uh, a trend or a pattern or something like that, um, and so hopefully you're picking up those things as we have these these classes, those little kind of details. And a lot of these details are things that I don't, I, I might not normally teach in a course if I was to teach uh, someone how to trade. Obviously, I've been doing this for 25 years or so, and I and it's it's impossible to to teach someone every single thing that I've learned. Um, but that, that's one reason why I like doing these updates is that there are situational things that we come across that I've encountered before or seen before, and then I can I can talk about those and, and, and uh, you know, teach you how you can use some of these things to, to predict a certain move or, or assume a certain move. And, um, and that way you can, you can it can be very educational for you and sometimes the classes I know tend to get a little bit repetitive and um, thank goodness that now the market is moving a little bit more and so we have more to talk about but uh, hopefully uh, those that are attending each week or, or either in the live class or through the recordings hopefully you're you're uh, you're getting something from every class. That's always my goal is that, uh, you know, even if you learn something really small, um, it's worth, it's worth the time. Um, and hopefully I'm, I'm able to do that uh, each week. So, all right, for the direction alerts, um, what we remember we talked about on Tuesday that we, we were pointing out that divergence again between the, the momentum and the breadth uh, that's still there. Um, we, we pulled back a little bit yesterday, although yesterday was a little bit more of an indecision day, which we'll, I'll show you here in a second when we look at the chart. But momentum on Tuesday, I believe it was, if I remember right, it was right on the edge of the extreme. It's backed off a little bit. But the breadth is also backed off, and it's back down here. Um, and again, it's just we're seeing just not a lot of participation um, in in uh, in the market, uh, especially on the rally days, uh, it's, it seems to be very concentrated, and and um, that that's obviously concerning. Uh, sentiment is still really high; uh, that hasn't changed. Um, buy sell ratios they're still pretty compact, although the sells are outpacing the buys a little bit, but but not to any extreme. What we look for is 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 it widening out to where it's getting stretched. It's gone. And usually you'll, it, the market needs to move in a, in one direction for uh, you know a period of time, either up or down, to stretch that um, that um, range there. Um, and so, and that's what we also look for in the direction alerts: is the market getting 
you know, overbought, oversold? Does it stretch one way or the other? We haven't seen it stretch for a while, uh, which is, you know, part of what we've had to deal with with that kind of just sideways movement. But um, it just tells us that we can really, we're in a position where we can move strongly up or, or down and uh, probably run in that direction for a while before getting um, overbought or oversold. Now this sentiment indicator is is you know with the market up today. Remember these update overnight, and so we're we're bumping up against this this uh, sell line right here. Typically the market sells off when it gets up into that area. Now it can get a little bit above it, as it has uh, even recently. So just because it hits the line doesn't necessarily mean that it's the market. So we got to sell off. But what this is telling us is that it is. Um, this indicator is showing a little bit of a of an overbought um, condition, underlying condition. And um, with today's rally, I would expect that we're going to spike back up to that that line again, uh, or close to it. Which again, this this is not again. There's not one thing I'm basing this on, but uh, there's a number of things that I've looked at that I'll go over with you that would indicate that um, if we do rally from here if we do break out and, and rally from here we're probably not going to rally very far um with you know being this close to that that overbought condition so um it's hard for me to see a sustained rally from this this area right here now that doesn't mean that um we're going to have a massive sell-off um you know it could mean that we move sideways again, which I, I don't think that'll happen just because um, um, we're kind of getting, uh, you know, the emotions are starting to kick back up again with, this, you know, the greed is kicking back up with the whole AI push. And, uh, and, and I think that yeah, that's important because that we, we need to get a little bit more bullishness in the market to for the market to drop because I think that's part of the reason why it resisted dropping was um, too many people were were overly bearish. And, um, you know, that this AI thing, I think, is starting to change that a little bit. I definitely see it, the, ch the tone changing on, um, you know, the media side. Uh, CNBC or Fox Business, or you know, there, there tends to be more and more people that are not worried about a sell-off, and and you know, um, a little bit more bullish on particularly AI. What everyone keeps saying is that everyone, a lot of people that know how to read a chart, recognize that the, the whole AI movement, the stocks that are involved with that, are getting really stretched. They're really overbought, um, but most everybody agrees that. You know that, that this trend is probably going to continue. It's very similar to kind of the internet boom of of 2000. And although none of these things play out exactly as things did in the past, there's there can be similarities. And and um, you know, one of the things I was talking a little bit about, I think on Tuesday, was that you know one of the signs that that uh, the AI movement is is topping out or, or about ready to crash is when we start seeing a whole bunch of IPOs, new new companies coming on board that aren't really making money, but they're they have some sort of an AI in their name or or their or in their purpose or what have you, and um, and that's when you know okay this is <laughs> this is getting a little crazy here, and we're not there yet, so that's why I, I do believe there's still room to run. So there's there's kind of this feeling like you know. It, we're turning a little bit more bullish, but you know it's a dangerous place to buy right here with the stocks going parabolic like they have. So, but it, but I think a little bit of that sentiment change is is good uh, um, and healthy for the markets, at least from the standpoint of movement. Um, emotion is what moves the market. And remember, fear and greed. And when fear and greed, when people aren't overly greedy and when they're not overly fearful, that's what we get over the last couple months uh, or since the beginning of the year, really, where it's very stagnant or sideways. And a lot of times you don't get really strong fear until you get really strong greed, meaning people have to feel like, oh, man, it's safe to get in and I'm going to make a ton of money on this. And it's when that suddenly reverses and drops. Like that's why we're, we're watching Nvidia and uh, and and uh, 
Microsoft and some of these, um, you know, big AI stocks is because if they start to roll over and drop, you know, all those people that thought that they're they're buying Amazon at the beginning of the internet boom are going to freak out and start selling immediately because they don't know what they're doing. They're, they're just a very, they made an emotional decision to get in. They're going to make an emotional decision to get out. And that's what kind of creates a little bit of that panic is, is when you feel, when you feel like you're safe getting in and then suddenly it, it's not working out that way and you didn't plan on that. So you don't have a plan to get out or, uh, uh, you know, you're not, you haven't considered that and so you just sell you just sell indiscriminately because of you, you don't know you weren't expecting it it wasn't your plan and that's that's what creates that fear and but in order to do that you have to have a little bit of the the uh, um, the greed kind of it, uh, jump up a little bit and so that's one thing i'm kind of noting is that it, it seems to be that the, that greed factor is is uh, jumping up a little bit in the market and and if you think that I'm cheering for a, a pullback, <clears throat> I kind of am, and I've made this point before, just from the standpoint of I know that uh, you know we haven't had a major market bottom without a panic sell-off. We haven't had a panic sell-off through this whole drop that we've had over a year and a half now. And um, I really want to just get it over with. I don't want to prolong this to where we break out and go to new all-time highs. And that probably means that, that, it's coming <laughs> and we haven't dealt with it yet uh, with all that we dealt with over the last year. It's, it's like, okay, we've already had all this, this crap trading conditions for a year. Let's just get it over with and, you know, get that panic drop and then we can get a little more confidence um, uh, coming back in and, and uh, we can get a new bull market underway. Um, and so that's kind of my motivation. Uh, but I do understand that, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the byproduct of that is, you know, could be recession, could be people losing jobs, could be a lot of pain. But I think that pain is coming. Like I said, the, the pain was, it was always going to be there when you're dealing with inflation and, and, um, you know, trying to get, you know, deal with inflation and dealing with recession, you're going to, you're going to have pain no matter what you're trying to control. And so, like I said, I, I'd rather rip the Band-Aid off than, you know, tug at the Band-Aid for the next uh, year. And um, so that's kind of, you know, <clears throat> that's a little bit of why, the why behind why, why I'd rather get the sell-off over with. So um, if you're angry with me for that, then that's fine. But at least, uh, at least you have a little bit of understanding uh, from my standpoint of, of um, what I what I'd rather what the, the what I'd rather have between the two bad outcomes. So rip the bandaid off is what I say. All right, so um, so that's something to keep an eye on. It's and and so let's take a look at the charts now. And yesterday we had kind of that indecision day. And I want to go back to something. Let's go to a three-month chart. When you have something that t takes place like this, um, I've kind of pointed this out before, but it's worth pointing out again. Um, here you had a bearish reversal candle. The next day was a, it was an indecision day. Whenever I have indecision days, usually it's good. It's usually going to be you have an open and close pretty close together, then you have an intraday high and an intraday low. and um, so it traded all the way up here, all the way down here, and opened and closed in this area right here. So it's the market is telling you through that that behavior that it's not quite sure if it wants to go up or go down. And so you have this bearish reversal candle, which suggests that it, the, the traders are thinking it's going to go down, or they're act they're acting in a way that would show that it's more likely to go down. Sellers are more in control, and that's immediately followed up by an indecision day. So that tells me that. They weren't as confident about that drop. Um, there wasn't a big follow through to that. Okay, you're reading that price action. This is, again, this is teaching you how to read these, the, the price action each day. And, and so I can't, I can't say that yesterday everyone was definitely really bearish or really bullish. I can't make that argument because that's not what the price action is telling you. <clears throat> and uh, so, this is where you've got to take away your bias, uh, you know, 
and say, okay, I may be bearish, but that the price action day is saying, you know, and it could go either way. Now, by the way, that bearish reversal candle did lead to a move down. We did open lower trade all the way down here. Um, so that's why I like to trade some of these uh, bullish and bearish reversal candles because they, they, they tend to work. Um, and you get some sort of a move in the near term, but very short term indicators, though. So with the indecision day the next day, I'd like to draw lines <clears throat> around the top and the bottom, the intraday high and the intraday low. Sorry, I got to take a drink. Um, it's um, I get like many people get allergies during the spring, and uh, one thing I've noticed over the years is the the cotton trees, the, the trees that have the, the the seeds look like cotton. We have a ton of them here in Utah, and my allergies go haywire. This when those cotton trees start shedding, and and um, I dread this time of year because of that. And there's really nothing I can take that that gets rid of it. But it's going to sound like I have a cold probably for the next uh, couple of weeks. <clears throat> All right, so what you do then? Okay, here's the indecision day. Here was the here's the 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 most bullish they were yesterday. Here's the most bearish they were yesterday. What I want to see the next day is do I close above or below <clears throat> the resistance or the or the the high or the low. If we if we close above it, that means that the the indecision is now reversing back into a bullish uh, momentum. Bulls are 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 taking control back. If it closes below, it means that the bears are continuing. In this case, the, in this context here, the bears are or the, the sellers are continuing to sell and push things lower. So back here, you had a bearish reversal candle, the indecision candle. And we closed below it, so it told me sellers were taking control, and it and it dropped. If you have another day inside of that range, we call that an inside. Well, I use the term inside day, um, where you have an inside candle as well. <clears throat> so I don't want to confuse. Uh, that's why I try to use the term. Um, I try to use the the. Uh, um, the uh, uh what's the i just my mind just went blank um <laughs> hold on this is gonna bug me i can't believe i'm forgetting the name um parami <laughs> it's a japanese name uh for for it means pregnant or something like that uh, and so that's what that's the name for the inside day of the candle so i try to use but I'm talking about an inside day on a candle, um, I try to use the word harami. And then when I use inside day, just the words inside day, I'm usually talking about is it trading within the high, low range. They're both kind of the same thing uh, for the most part. Although in this case, usually you're talking about, the, in the case of the harami, you're talking about the body. Are you trading inside the body of the candle? When I have an indecision candle, I'm talking about the range of the high, low. But it's but so it, it 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 so that's just telling us today that the buyers are gaining more control. We're bumping up against this resistance area again. <clears throat> so we'll see how that that plays out. Now again, price action is not reading price action, reading the candles is not telling you long term outlooks. It's not saying oh well, we're going to rally up, you know, you know another. 30 points on the S&P um, because we're closing out above that range. But it does tell you just that day-to-day -day shift. And that's all we're reading with the candles is really what's going on that particular day. And then if we combine it with the rest of the trend, if you're in a strong uptrend and you and you were to close above the, you know, you pull back a little bit, you closed above the, the high of the indecision candle, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a strong bullish uh, signal for you. All right, so now I I think I talked about this um, Tuesday. I you know I just do a lot of updates and and so I I uh, never know when I talk about what. But um, this also is a bearish kind of pattern that's forming right here. Whenever you're 
whenever you're in an uptrend, usually a strong, a nice uptrend is you're going to get nice, strong, upward, impulsive moves. That's why we kind of draw it out that way. Sometimes near the end of a of a run up, you'll start to drift. You'll go higher, but you're starting to drift. You get higher highs and higher lows, but you're drifting more sideways. It looks more um, um, corrective looking. Even though you're going to higher highs and higher lows, it starts to drift more sideways. And that's what we call a wedge formation. Um, in Elliott wave, we call it a diagonal fifth wave. And, you know, typically it um, it's a sign of topping. So now I've seen some of these where it, you know, something happens and it, it, it takes off. So again, these aren't, none of these are absolute. There's always a low probability outcome that could take place. But this behavior is acting like that that um, diagonal fifth wave or wedge formation. So we reached a higher high right there. Um, you know, we've got a higher low here, kind of an even low here. Uh, but it's it's sluggish now. It's kind of you can and, and we, let's back out to that um, six month chart so we can see it a little bit better too. And again, this is what we've been dealing with for the last two months is this, I mean, that's, you've heard me complaining about how sideways we've been moving. This was the worst part right here. That was that week and a half where <laughs> we didn't go anywhere. Um, now, typically, we've, and we've got two points that we can draw here. So what we're going to watch, and, and I'll point it out when when it happens, if it happens, but um, you could draw a trend line up through here, and usually with any wedge pattern, you're looking for a break of the of the support line right there. And that's the only one that really that really matters right now is it does a break below that. Um, that would usually signal the start of of an impulsive move down. <clears throat> now, what if we do break out higher again? Keep an eye on this. This would be the next resistance area here, about 431-ish, somewhere around there. Um, now, remember a few weeks ago, I said when we were looking like we were breaking out of here, or could break out of here, this range right here, I said, wouldn't shock me, because everybody is looking at this one, the 431 area up here. It wouldn't shock me if it, if it rallied, broke out, and then got somewhere in the middle and then reversed, kind of when no one's expecting it. So I'm still, I, again, this is game planning. I'm not trying to predict anything. I'm just trying to be prepared uh, in case something like that happens. I've already assumed that I've already um, planned on that possibility. So if I start to see it play out that way, I'm ready to react. I'm not caught off guard, um, um, but I'm not. I'm not saying that that's what it has to do, but just again, when when the crowd starts to focus on one area, I start to say, uh, "That's I don't want to be part of the crowd in those situations. I want to I want to look for ways to not be in that in that group because they're when they get too too locked into one area, usually the majority is going to be wrong uh, in that situation, and the market's going to punish the majority. It always looks for ways to punish the the majority." Um, and if you haven't re re recognized that, uh, just keep trading long enough, and and you'll get you'll get beat up enough to where you start to say, I don't really want to be, <laughs> I don't really want to be with the crowd when they're really extreme. Um, I'm gonna do the, uh, just the opposite, to, or look to do the opposite. Um, but that's something I, I just want to point out again that we, you know, you can keep an eye on to see if it does, if it, uh, if we do break out from here, again, the the a lot of the indicators are showing that it. It probably isn't going to last very long if we do break out rally here. And I just, there's no way I could see it getting to 431 with the the, the signals we're getting, particularly on the VIX. And uh, we just looked at that one sentiment indicator that was pushed up against that that uh, overbought area there. Uh, and again, even even these indicators were just, remember these update uh, overnight. So we'll, we'll see this bump push into the extreme range probably with today's move. It'll push a little bit further to that uh, right side of the extreme range. Not all the way there, but 
it just it's just showing us that it, it it'd be the big headwind for it to rally significantly from here is is what we're we're pointing out. Now you could have said that about Nvidia, although they were boosted by their earnings report that that uh, really pushed it overbought and it was already kind of overbought, it became even more overbought. But um, but those are rare situations. Those would be the lower probability outcomes. Uh, Dow, um, obviously, it, it was been underperforming. It, it isn't breaking out. Um, although we have pointed out, we're going to continue to watch to see if if uh, this is an inverse head and shoulders pattern right here, which is a bullish formation. You have the left and right shoulders right at the same spot. But you'd have to start to see this look very impulsive. And again, it's possible, but it um, I, it's just very hard to see a, a real strong move. By the way, remember jobs report tomorrow. Um, you know, if you're looking at potential triggers, again, all, all I bring these things up for is when the charts look like they could be doing something. I look for potential triggers. I don't see how that jobs report is going to be viewed as is bullish in any way. If it, if unemployment is very low or is lowering, that's going to tell the Fed they got it. They're going to keep hiking. They need to keep hiking because inflation can just kick right back up again. <clears throat> if it if it's higher, if it's showing a higher than than expected number, then it's going to bring in. Uh oh, we're in a recession uh, or we're starting a recession. We're starting to see the signs of recession. The market hasn't priced that in yet. And so that could be very bearish. On top of that, everyone that's been saying that the debt ceiling uh, is already done, it's not. The Senate has to has to vote. Now, although that could happen, maybe it's happening right now. I don't know. I have been paying attention. To pol I try to avoid paying attention to politics, but uh, except as it relates to, to the market. But um, but it's looking like this thing could carry out. <clears throat> uh, at least into tomorrow, if not into the weekend. And uh, I just find it hard that, that that big professional traders that have huge exposure. Monday is a deadline. That's not getting in. They're not. They're not going to have really a lot of room there to to uh, sell. Everybody been selling on Monday if, it, if the deal doesn't get done. Um, I can't see how they wouldn't trim a little bit, or or at least buy protective puts, uh, and that would spike the VIX up. Um, I'm not seeing any of that. In fact, just the opposite of that. Um, but it's just shocking that there's just no concern. And um, and I get it that we all we've seen the playbook that's gonna it's probably gonna get done. But you never know, man. All it takes is a few uh, a few crazy people to to delay it. Uh, and uh, you know it may get done eventually but it, it you know we could have damage to the credit rating um before that and uh, that would be really really bad so um i just am surprised that the the market isn't showing any reaction to it talk about the sell off of all sell offs if that doesn't get done <clears throat> by monday um that would give us our panic sell off for sure cuz nobody that i can see is is protected um against that um, that happening and not even considering that happening and so um that would be and so everyone would be doing the same thing they'd all be um they'd all be uh um selling at the same time <clears throat> a question could the the markets or the get a boost if the senate approves a debt ceiling bill they, there could be i think there could be a little bit of a rally off of it but i don't think it you know, i think it'll be very short-lived um there are yeah i, I don't want to get into kind of the details there but um <clears throat> if if the market i think if the market um if the market I think we would have seen a stronger rally with the the uh, um, the House passing the bill. Um, I, I yeah, I just don't because because what the market would immediately do is it, it, like I said, you can get a one or two day re, uh, rally off that, but then what what happens immediately? They're going to say, okay, inflation, recession, you know. They're going to go back to what they've been focused on the last uh, while. I, there's no, 
there's no long-term boost for, for you know, at least that, that I see for raising the debt ceiling. Um, but like I said, so there's very little upside, I think, from from having it out of the way. There's a lot of downside if it gets delayed. It's obviously going to get done because it would crash the uh, economy if it doesn't. But um, the question is, does it does it get delayed enough to where it hurts the the um, the rating? And um, and nobody wants that. If you, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on on that. What that means is that now we're paying more in interest, which means you're probably going to eventually pay more in taxes uh, for the same debt. You know, it's like it's just you're just basically screwing yourself. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into a argu political argument on this because I know people have strong feelings either way, and I don't. I, I don't as far as politics go. I'm I hate politicians so. Um, you're not going to see me sharing any single individual politician on in any way, but um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, I I just I just don't see um, I don't see a huge rally um, off of it. Now I could be wrong, but there again, what I base that on is the technicals, or you know, the the conditions we're already in, the internals, the VIX as low as it, as it already is. The, the uh some of those those uh momentum indicators or the the um um sentiment indicators as as high as they are I just can't see it rallying significantly from here. So I could be wrong and if again, like I've always said, if it if it looks like it's if I'm reading the price action and the behavior is acting very, very bullish, I'll jump in I'll jump into that side uh no problem. I'm not my goal is not to be right it's, or, or to be um, necessarily right or in predicting things. I just want to make money and make sure I'm on the right side of what the market is doing. And, um, and that's what we're trying to focus on. All right. So the queues, again, pretty extended um, already. We already know that that's a, been a very concentrated move. You know, all the, the story behind that. Russell 2000, again, lagging. Although it's up today and it's up a pretty good percentage today, it's been lagging uh, significantly. That hasn't really changed. Um, bond market um, has been rallying pretty strong the last uh, couple of days. Now it's looking a little bit uh, indecisive today as it's bumping into this this res uh, resistance area. Now remember, we were looking at this this range before. Um, we said if it if it broke below this range, it's probably going to come down and test down here, which it did. You know, we're still looking at this wider range, though. Um, all I'm looking at is is the are bonds going to work their way back up into here, and then when they get up to there, can they break it out, or does it reverse and come back down to here and break below here? So, but below here is bearish on bonds, above here is bullish. This is kind of the unknown in the middle. It could go either way. Those are the major reversals that uh, that looks like a really wide range there it really isn't when you back out and look at the, the longer term chart here here's that range here's that tighter range we were looking at before and we're kind of in the well we're bumping up we want to see how it reacts to this now that this was support now it could act as resistance as it re roll over and drop back down to here if it breaks above that it's probably working its way back up to up to here we'll see if it breaks out above that but we're a ways away from that, that happening. So we're in an area where it could go either way right here um, in that range. Gold has taken off again. A lot of it is because of the big move, big reversal in the dollar, which we talked about. We said that was it was probably going to happen here soon, within a few days. Looks like it's breaking a little bit today. Um, gold and silver should benefit from that. Same with oil. Oil's rallied pretty strong today from that overbought condition. Now we did get, we were bearish on oil based off of that bearish ABC pattern there, or potential bearish ABC pattern had this impulsive move down. Um, is that being reversed today? We'll see. Let's see if that has some legs there. I, I'm very cautious to get overly bullish on oil, although this is a time of year where oil tends to do well, but if there are more recession signals, that's gonna be a big headwind for, for oil. Maybe cause oil to go down. Here's a big move on the dollar. So we were last week or Tuesday we were talking about 
um, very overbought on this move. We're looking at this resistance area right here. Yesterday was the big signal when you had the, the, the uh, bearish uh, shooting star, or it looks like a, the hammer upside down, although um, the inverted hammer is actually a different formation. Um, but I, I, I don't mind if people call that an upside down hammer or something like that. It's the same outlook. It should, it, you should get a downward move off of that. One of my favorite bearish reversal patterns to trade and sure enough, you got a big move down on the dollar today. Um, now it could just be an over, overbought pullback. We want to see how it pulls back from here. If it, if it starts to chop around, if it rallies back up and starts to look a little bit more sideways. That'd be a bullish correction for probably another move higher. If we get a real, if we get some continuation of this where it sells off some more and then tries to rally in a sluggish way, that tells me there's probably more room to the downside. We only have a one day drop, so probably by Tuesday, next class, we'll have a little bit more information there on, on whether that could be a trend reversal or just a correction within the uptrend. But we'll continue to watch that. Um, now the VIX, this is, so if you're saying we're gonna break, we haven't even broken out yet, at least, Maybe while I was talking, we did. Well, we're bumping up against that. And by breaking, we did break out. We did break out. Uh, well, we didn't get break down below that trend line. We got down to it yesterday on that indecision day. I'm talking about the the black candle that was formed on on uh, Tuesday. Um, we're not above there yet. Um, but there again, the VIX is all the way down below 16. I, again, the, the, can it go lower? Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's nothing that's absolute. There's nothing that says it can't. The VIX can't go lower than this, but but that's not how I'm going to read things. I'm going to read things from probability from a probability standpoint. It, what's the probability here? Is it is it more probable that the VIX is going to drop below 15, or is it more probable for the VIX to work back up towards 20, maybe not get above 20 because it has been able to do that for a while, but at least get back up. 220. It's much more probable it's going to work its way from here up to where 20. Well, what's going to cause it to do that? It would it would be most likely some sort of a pullback or move lower that would move that mix up. Now, could you have a situation where the market rallies and the VIX spikes up? Yeah. But what does that signal usually, if you see that happen, if the market moved up and the VIX moved up, it means that the, the, the traders are not trusting that rally. Well, what could cause traders not trust the rally? It could be that a debt ceiling vote, the final debt ceiling vote, uh, that could be definitely something that could maybe cause that. That's something I'd look at tomorrow. Do I see, and, and usually what would happen is the market would be a little bit more flat, but the VIX would be spiking up. That would probably tell me that people are hedging a little bit uh, into the weekend. Um, but there again, I, I, I look for triggers, jobs report that, and again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong on jobs report predictions before. What I said, I don't see how it's going to be bullish, uh, and then it does. Um, again, am I with the crowd? Is the majority of the crowd thinking the way I'm thinking? And, and then the market does the opposite, um, squeezes some of those shorts. Yeah, it could happen. Um, but I would definitely lean a little bit more towards the the bearish side. Oh, I wanted to point out this out too, because this could be important how we close tomorrow. Um, I've been watching the weekly chart too, and you can't pull this up on um, can't pull up a weekly chart on on Traders Pro. And I'm not talking about a longer term chart. You can do that, but where each candle represents a week of trading instead of a day of trading. Um, so as of as of yesterday, we had a bearish reversal candle. Obviously, the rally today has changed that. But this is a if it if it closes like this tomorrow, that's a bearish what we call a hanging man candle formation, not the strongest reversal formation. So it wouldn't it wouldn't tell me that uh, that next week is is very likely to be bearish. It could mean it's the week after because uh, sometimes it'll show up. Um, 
and then you'll have an indecision week, and then you'll drop. You don't always get the reversal right away off of that. Um, but the price action so far, really, it's, unless we get a massive move up tomorrow to where it, it, it's, it's, it's going to look like this for the week, it had a tail, but it closed really strong at the highs of the week, uh, you know, something like this. Um, but even that, look at that. These are weeks, remember. There were two weeks where it pulled back a little bit off of that, that formation. Because what's happening, this is showing buying exhaustion. Sellers pushed it all the way down here the first few days of the week, and then and then buyers are pushing it back up. But if all they're able to do is just get it back to where it opened the week, that it, that's uh, they're not able to push it significantly higher. It's showing buying exhaustion. Now, we also I'd like to look at uh, we'll, we want to keep track of the the big big cap tech stocks as well. We talked about that. If we see those breaking down, those are trying to rebound today, but is it is it does it end up being more of an exhaustive move where they're trying to trying to push it higher but they can't? That's what I'm trying to read on this. Uh, if we drop it all tomorrow, though, it would definitely create a bearish reversal candle, a bearish reversal week candle, and I would be I would assume that next week should be lower at least some point in the week it could be lower. Now, just like with all candles, they can be very short term. Um, here's a bearish inside or, or Harami. Remember, we talked about, uh, talked about uh, that. It, it tells you there's a good chance if this was a daily chart, it would tell you the next day should it should go lower the next day at some point. Doesn't mean it has to be big move down. Well, this is a weekly chart. Well, it did trade lower that next week off of that pattern, got all the way down here. Now it did also get all the way up here, but. Um, but it, it, you know there was a bearish harami and it dropped big. It was a big week down. Two weeks it dropped off of that. Um, and so you know here again, kind of that it fought to go higher here. That next week it did go lower than the end of where it closed at the end of the week. That week before, you know. You start to get a number of these. These are all kind of signals of a of a weakening rally. We see it in the in the I showed you the wedge formation, and it's just obvious that there's there's not. But the, the key the thing to point out too, there's not heavy selling yet either. We're we're kind of stuck in this. Eventually, we're going to break in one way or the other. But from the argument I made today. The easier path would be to break to the downside based off of the VIX being this low and and um, and again kind of that you typically how those wedge formations typically break they tend to break to the downside most of the time. Um, all right, so keep an eye on that. Um, the uh, also on the cues as well. You got the really a hanging that's a real strong hanging man candle. Um, on the cues, and then this is going to tie back again to those those big cap tech stocks. How how are they performing? But that's a big that VIX being that low. How can you rally significantly out of that? Um, and this isn't the first time I've been teaching you this. How many times have I, have I said that? And then what happens? We get down here, and I keep saying, I can't see us rallying much off of this, and boom. I can't see us rallying much off of this, boom, we drop. Can't see us rallying much off of this, I don't know. But what side do you want to be on as far as your expectations there? Again, it, this this could be the one time where it, it's, it is the low probability outcome. I do know the market does that from time to time. It keeps us uh, from knowing exactly what's going to happen next. But that's where I want to be. I want to be on the, pro the side of the probabilities as best I can. And that's what I'm trying to teach you. These clues are there for you to observe. And they're, they're going to help you not to know exactly what's going to happen next, but to be on the right side of the probabilities most of the time. And that's all we need to, to, to be successful. Well, we need that. We need movement. <laughs> you know what? I've I got to get out of the sideways movement. All right, um, 
boy, I don't really, let's see, let's, I don't want to spend too much time on the rest of it. Well, one thing on the chip stocks here is, is a, not the strongest island reversal, but there's a little bit of a, a, here where you gapped up off of this, you gapped up and then you gapped down the next day. And now if this trades up any higher into that candle, it kind of, it kind of wipes that out. It's not, like I said, it's not the strongest island reversal, but, um, you know, that if it does hold that and drops, that'd be, that, that'd be a pretty bearish uh, sign for the chip stocks, at least near term. Um, all right, let's, I want to really quickly, I need, we need to get into some stocks here, but I want to, peek in on those mega cap tech stocks. So NVIDIA, again, had a big down day yesterday, but it's fighting to go higher again, uh, fighting to come back again today. I, I kind of talked about that on Tuesday, that there's going to be, for a little while, there's going to be that, that buy the dip. But there were so many people that got in right here and the, the days after. Um, and this is what really is makes me bearish, is this gap up right here with a bearish um, – um, shooting star candle formation. Um, you have to wonder if everyone that wanted to get in is in now. Um, and then if that's the case, we're already seeing everyone overly bullish on it. And that's, the, that's what you typically get when you're at a top, when everyone's in, because everyone, everyone that wants to owns it, own it, owns it. <clears throat> it's kind of like, I always, I always used to explain it like an Apple party, because Apple was a stock for the longest time. You know, if you go to an Apple party, what are you going to talk? You have to, the only way you get into the Apple party is if you own Apple stock. Well, what do you think the conversations are going to be at that party? Everyone that, that's there owns Apple stock. Remember, the only reason why you will own a stock or buy a stock is if you believe it's going to go higher, right? If you know it's going to go down, you're not going to hold on to your stock, right? Um, you're going to sell. So what are the conversations at that party? Oh yeah, I think Apple's going to go to, you know, a thousand. Oh no, it's going to be 2000. Oh no, I'm a little bit more conservative. I think it's only going to go up 500 points from here. And those are the arguments. It's not, Oh, I think it's going to tank. And that's, if you can mentally visualize that party, that's what this is like right here. Everyone that wants to owns it, owns it. Now remember, in order to go, go higher, you have to have new people come in that, that and, and the new people have to think it's going to go even higher from here. And that's becoming less and less. There's fewer and fewer of the people thinking that. And that's what's showing up right here. But again, the sentiment is going to be extremely bullish because, because everyone that owns it owns it and they're, 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 they're going to believe it's going to go higher. But it can't go higher if the new people don't come in. Now that could always happen when new people do come in, but that behavior right here is showing the opposite. And this is kind of showing that last ditch. This is showing the people that were that didn't want to buy in. They're waiting for the first dip. Any first dip, they're going to buy in. There was your dip. They're buying in. Now I'd like to see does that roll over? And maybe it doesn't. This thing could be up here. And you're saying, well, Jerry, that that whole argument you made was was. Uh, <laughs> was crap but uh from a probability standpoint again uh this is showing a kind of a topping type behavior um now i'm not seeing it yet in the buying yet i'm not seeing i'd like to see it I'd like, i would like to see it fade into the close if it's if it's a really weak um, attempt to push it higher or get another bearish reversal candle tomorrow or something like that but but watch for it starts breaking down um, you know, you're going to see, you're going to see everything else, uh, sell off Microsoft, same thing. Apple went higher today, had a couple of indecision candles or kind of bearish candles and then did, did go higher today, shook that off, but it's getting really starting to get stretched over bot. You also have this trend line on Apple. See if it breaks out above that or if it, if it uh, reverses on that. AMD had a pretty sharp reversal, sell off. G 
to AMD could have a really if it gaps down from if it gaps down from this area right here. Now you have a really distinct island reversal right there. If it were to gap down big some at some point, it may not, but if it did in this area right there, that would be a pretty distinct island reversal. It would be extremely bearish if that were to take place. Google's trying to hang on more more choppy there. So none of these have really shown. It, we saw showed signs of a breakdown with the bearish reversal candle on Tuesday, and then the yesterday some of these had some follow through to that. So they're showing signs of slowing down the rally, but not yet breaking the rally. Here's Tesla, and so. But again, from from this area, it's going to take these stocks going even becoming even more overbought to. If you're talking about pushing the S&P up to that that other level, could it happen? I've seen markets get crazy and they, they're overbought. They stay overbought for two more weeks and what have you. But uh, usually you're in bull markets in those situations and and um, strong bull markets and strong economic conditions. And we're definitely not having that. There's Meta, same thing. So I don't see a real significant breakdown yet. Um, but we'll continue to watch that. And again, tomorrow could be a key day for that. Maybe that shows up tomorrow, or maybe it just really gets extreme tomorrow. Um, we'll find out. Hold on here. Yeah, Tesla. Tesla's getting close to new new highs. What's a common theme with all these though? Is there there um, there's stocks that that the average person is extremely bullish on. There, you know, Apple's that way. Always has a, a cult following of buyers. Tesla is that way. Nvidia is becoming that, um, and will probably maintain that for a while, at least in the near near future. Um, but that's why I like to I like to study them because they they can tell you when. <laughs> They, when they, they start breaking down, they, they signal when the market's breaking down. When they start recovering after a big sell-off, that tells you the market's probably going to recover from the sell-off. So you, you do want to pay attention. That's why I created that watch list to keep an eye on them and see if there's – it's almost like they're their own index. You know, we can see see how they're they're behaving. Um, and, and we know that that's that's where all the money's going right now. It's going to that those handful of stocks. Not all, but majority. People are piling into those, and and um, and so those will give us the first signals when they when it finally breaks down. Uh, in the portfolio, I did uh, I got out of the the uh, the uh, uh, SARK the, that was my hedge. Um, I got out of that this morning when the market started rallying. Um, I may put it back on, if, depending on what happens tomorrow, but i I got to see. The reason why I put it on Tuesday was that bearish reversal I saw. Why the hedge or protect against that and um, and did a little bit. I mean, it was there in case in case it got, it, there's a big sell up there, but I'll, I'll look to put those on. So just be aware of that. If we get a, because remember I said, if, if we get a down day tomorrow, it's really going to create a bearish weekly candle. It, there's going to be a good chance we see a week down or some the market lower some point next week. I'll probably throw a few more of those hedges on if that's the case and and um, protect the the other stocks I'm holding. Gold has moved higher today with that move down the dollar. That's starting to recover, looking looking okay. Um, ADMA is still looking out. Okay, I'm down a little bit today, but it's been just kind of flat the last few days. Um, and then KD and Y up pretty nice today. This is that inverse head and shoulders breakout. And the neckline, right? We broke out above there on Tuesday and bought into that breakout there. I think my stop's down below here, so we got some wiggle room on that one. All right, under the new buys, a uh, couple – well, first of all, this is one I showed a little while – I can't remember when I showed it, but I remember showing it because it was that um, that, that uh, 
it was a uh, um, the triangle formation, ascending triangle formation. And today we're breaking out to the upside on that. Now, you know, you have to make, you have to decide whether you would chase that or not. I don't know if I would chase it uh, just because, again, well, one reason is that you can take the base, of, you know, kind of a minimum target is you take the base of the triangle, you project that from the breakout. You already made, basically made half that move with today's, if it closes right there. Uh, not that it can't go higher than that, but I usually don't like to chase big days like this because there's a tendency after a day like that for it to move sideways or retrace the day and meaning that it probably comes back and at some point tests the breakout. But we were, we were watching that. I think if, I can't remember if it was, I think it was back here when it was looking like it was starting to break out or was close to breaking out somewhere in this area here. I think I brought that up, brought that chart up. Uh, another one, um, KRTX, uh, biotech stock. Uh, it just looks like it's coming out of a, of a corrective pattern here. Longer term chart. Showing that already had this big pullback. Is it starting to work its way up the right side of the bowl? The things I like to see. Another one, the COGT. And the same thing. Big, well, big update today. But it, it again looks like it's starting to roll over. Higher, higher highs, higher lows. Where it had lower highs, lower lows through here. Look at a longer term chart here. You can see you kind of. It's, look at this is a big ABC correction, and then it looks like it's kind of going, you're moving up the right side of the bowl there. But what I like about these types of patterns is not that they always work, because obviously the you know the more established trend is you know gives you a little bit more confidence. But I like the reward to risk of it. It's acting like it's starting a new uptrend. And I can manage the risk pretty well. I don't take much risk if I'm wrong, but I have a lot of upside reward potential if I'm right. And that's really the only main reason why I like those those types of patterns. And, and, and they don't all work out, but that's kind of what I like to look for. Because even when I'm wrong, I don't lose very much. When I'm right, all it takes is one trade that you're right to make up for a ton of ones where you're wrong. Uh, VRX right here, 97 strength rank. Again, what I liked here is you had this kind of looked like an ABC pullback, and then you have a pulse of up, and then this looks corrective again. And then here's one that's maybe a little bit more, oops, a little bit more well known. Roblox RBLX. And this drop right here, you can make an argument. Maybe that was a little bit of an ABC. Kind of an impulsive move up. This is corrective, and you're breaking out of that sideways correction right here today. Maybe a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern there as well. Now, obviously, a lot of these would be contingent on the, on the market uh, going higher. A couple out of the sectors, computer and technology has moved up the list here, and it's a big sector. You see there's 800 stocks, 300 buys, 300 holds, 200 sells. <clears throat> a lot to choose from there. Um, like this INTT, 99 strength rank. And again, you could wait for the breakout here, but it's kind of similar to that, you know, kind of that uh, ascending triangle formation that we just saw, that uh, OMER. 
if it can break out above that. Now, the opposite, if it, can, if it breaks to the downside, that could be bearish, so you'd watch to see that for that as well. Or you could put a stop there or something. If it, if it breaks out to the upside, you could put a stop below that, that uh, trend line. Uh, and then another one that I've been waiting for, because um, I want to get back into it, is this SGML, Sigma Lithium Corp. We've been, we were in it before. I think I pointed this out um, either last class or the one before, one of those ones. But it, it's kind of pulled back a little bit of an ABC. Looks like a decent update today. I like how it's kind of hugging that trend line of the uptrend. And I'm going to have really a really tight stop on this. I'm going to have it down a little bit here. I'm going to put it at about 36. I'm not going to be risking very much on, on this one. Um, so I'm going to add this one in. Be right there, close to about eight thousand. That'd be good enough there. Seven thousand eight hundred. What's my percentage? Yeah, only six hundred bucks risk in the trade. Let's go and purchase that. All right, one more industrial products. Uh, this. EIR 93 strength rank. And you see it's been in a little bit of an uptrend, a little bit of volatility right into here. But just in the near term, I like this impulsive up, corrective back down, this choppy pullback right here. Now you could, if you want a little bit more confirmation on this, um, I don't know if I'd wait for it to break out above here. That might be too far, too much, but you could you, you could wait for it to go back to a buy signal as a as confirmation. Um, wouldn't take it's not it's pretty close to going back to a buy signal. Wouldn't take very much to move up or just to close above the high of the previous day. That's a, a real easy one to use. So if it closes, this would probably go into tomorrow then. If it closes above today's high tomorrow, it doesn't look like we're going to close above yesterday's high. But if we close above today's high tomorrow, you know, that could be confirmation in. You know, you could, by that time, you see what the jobs report, what if the market's rallying tomorrow, that'd be a better sign. Confirmation. All right. So we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. Um, and really, the, the key is well, not only the key will be the, the what happens after how it trades after the jobs report, but how that candle looks at the end of the day. If we're lower at all tomorrow, it's going to be a, a bearish weekly candle, and um, we'll see if that leads to a, a, a little bit of a down week next week. Again, it's not telling you. Not giving you long term predictions there, and it, it's not always going to be right. It may not be big, it could be barely lower at some point next week. But um, we'll, we'll look at things day by day anyway to see how things are, are trading next week. But that's what we're looking at tomorrow is, is do we see that? Uh, how do we close tomorrow? Now, if it closes real strong, um, <laughs> See how the VIX does, because uh, if the VIX is is going any lower here, I just I don't I just don't know that I would chase it. I just I don't feel comfortable chasing a rally. Um, I personally would be waiting for just waiting for the next bearish candle to show up and then buy puts on it, trade the options on it uh, on the way back down again. That's what I've been doing lately, and and it's been working out pretty well um, as the market hasn't been been rallying for very long. 
All right, that's all I have, though. Have a great uh, weekend, and we'll see you Tuesday for the next market update. Bye, everyone.